It's another one of the blessings that Jehovah has given you and me, this blessing of seeing firsthand the growth of our spiritual family and being able to support it. Well, consider in that same chapter of Isaiah, chapter 60, an additional blessing, a third, mentioned in verse 17. Instead of the copper, I will bring in gold. And instead of the iron, I will bring in silver. Instead of the wood, copper. And instead of the stones, iron. And I will appoint peace as your overseers and righteousness as your task assigners. Have you seen the fulfillment of this prophecy during this special time, the conclusion of the system of things? Indeed, we have. So in a world where Joel Dellinger paints a picture of a spiritual utopia with ever-increasing numbers and uh, the replacement, apparently, of copper to gold, one must question the validity of such claims. While he conveniently selects data from the 2016 yearly report rather than the most recent one, the reality seems to be quite the opposite. In fact, the current state of affairs eerily mirrors the prophecy found in Isaiah 3, 4 to 6, which we read, and I think that reflects the organization today. I will make boys their princes, and the unstable will rule over them. The people will oppress one another, each one his fellow man. The boy will assault the old man, and the lightly esteemed one will defy the respected one. Each one will take hold of his brothers in his father's house and say, You have a cloak. You be our commander. Take charge of this overthrown pile of ruins. So according to these scriptures, poise will become the princes and the unstable will rule over them. It just describes a society where people oppress one another. Isn't that what we see with youth? I mean, young ones assaulting the elderly and those of little esteem defying the respected ones. It is a topsy turvy terry world. It is a world where individuals in their father's house appoint themselves as commanders seeking power over a crumbling kingdom, the kingdom of the Woodstower. So in 2023, the organization seems to have fulfill these prophetic words. They have appointed young men as elders, even in their early 20s, instructing congregations to place authority in their hands, in the hands of inexperienced individuals. Imagine the terror this must instill in the established elders, typically men in the late 50s or 60s, having to share the secrets of the congregation with teenagers now who have yet to leave home find employment, experience, relationships, or marry. Not only have they made boys their princes, but they have also embraced the unstable to rule over them. I recall the uh, moment when Stephen Lett first appeared on our screens during one of the first uh, JW broadcastings, and the initial reaction of Jehovah's Witnesses present at the room where I was, it was laughter, immediately followed by... Uh, uh, silence, because they realized, of course, the in, in impropriety of laughing at a member of the governing body. It begs, it begs really the question, how would you feel if a person dressed up as a clown took the platform and began reading from the Bible a serious message? Uh, surely it would be inappropriate and distract from the intended message. Though Lett doesn't dress as a clown, his extreme facial expressions and demeanor make it difficult to perceive him as a suitable leader before an audience of 9 million Jehovah's Witnesses. But this is the state of affairs we're living in. Uh, drawing a parallel to this unsettling situation, I found a quote from Cipriano Di Meo, a Catholic priest well known for performing exorcisms, who said his insight on the signs of possession. He mentions that possessed individuals often exhibit reactions to prayer, including extreme facial expressions, somebody you know, threatening words or gestures, and blasphemous remarks against God. Uh, while it would be a rash or extreme 
thing to say that Stephen Lett is possessed. It is worth noting that the, he displays many of these characteristics described by this exorcist. His exaggerated facial expressions and statements that seemingly blaspheme the nature of God, such as his remark only a few days, a few months ago, about the babies being enemies of God. Uh, that all raises concerns about unstable people taking over the organization. So why do we witness such traits uh, manifesting within the Woodstar organization? It appears to be a strong indication that God has abandoned this institution, much like he did with the nation of Israel in the days of Isaiah. Back then, the nation had forsaken Jehovah, and consequently, Jehovah abandoned them, leading to a debased state of mind, where the rule of crazy people and young children prevailed. Rather than experiencing the promised transformation of copper turning into gold, as Joel Dellinger will have you believe, the organization is rapidly deteriorating into a pile of ruins, as the verse says, that only the children and the unstable seem or willing to take control. In light of this unsettling development, one must question the future of the organization and whether it can regain its spiritual footing. The echoes of Isaiah's prophecy serve as a solemn reminder that abandoning Jehovah's, Jehovah comes with severe consequences. Will the Woodstower organization recognize its state of decline and seek a path of renewal, or will it continue down to this treacherous path of self-destruction? Only time will tell uh, the ultimate fate of this once, once upon a time prominent spiritual institution. So with that in mind, uh, and with this few thoughts, I'm coming to the end of this video, guys. You will find the link to this article below on my website and also a link to the website where I got a quote about the exorcist priest. And please like and subscribe and I shall speak to you soon. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you.